Welcome back to the Money Show here on our Ice News. Joining us now is Oji Ope with stories trending around the world. Hello, Oji. How was your weekend? Good, Good morning, morning, Dr. Yeah. Good it to was see you. fantastic. Welcome. Good to see you too. How was your weekend? Yes, yes. A lot of partying up and down. Uh, so. <laughs> <laughs> Leila, you look fabulous. Thank I you. Love, love your Thank time. you. Great to see you, Oji. You too. And good morning to you viewers. We begin what's trending today with the remarkable speech of an 11-year-old anti-corruption activist at the just-concluded United Nations Office on Drugs and Crime Conference in Vienna, Austria. Naomi Oloyede addressed the high-level global conference, which was launched with the ambitious aim at helping countries achieve a positive and sustainable impact on crime prevention, criminal justice, corruption prevention, and the rule of law. At the conference, entitled Educating for the Rule of Law, the 11-year-old Nigerian girl addressed over 350 leaders, policymakers, and educators gathered from across the world. And on behalf of all children, she urged world leaders to make the world a better, safer, and more inclusive place. That was a well-deserved standing ovation, yes. I believe. I mean, from 11-year-old Naomi. She was chosen after a debate that she did on anti-corruption in Nigeria from her school to go to Vienna. And I think it's such an applaudable yeah. act. Congratulations to her. Congratulations mm -hmm. to her parents. Absolutely. I mean, of all the, uh, <clears throat> despite all the challenges we may have in this country, right. mm -hmm. occasionally, even regularly, mm -hmm. you know, we get good news uh, from mm -hmm. both young and you know, growing up uh, Nigerians, Nigerian youths, yes. you know, who reassure us all the time that there is hope and that Nigeria is truly a country of creative and talented uh, people. Mm -hmm. uh, what we just need is just to get it right. Absolutely. You know, we have great potential, we have great opportunities, and, you know, listening to the uh, young lady, yeah. Naomi Oluyede, uh, you know, she could well become Nigeria's version of Greta She's Thunberg. Our, that, that was my first thought when I saw the speech. I'm like, this is our uh -huh. Greta Thunberg. I mean, it is important to start young. And I think she's, you know, she's a huge, good example for our young children Honestly. to see that you can actually travel to Vienna and give speeches to and world also leaders. Not know and about they, these yes, kinds of things. Problems. Actually Correct. have this ingrained in you. Make it a part of your life to get involved in and current that's what affairs she at such a young age. Yes. It's beautiful to The thing, see. of course, is to... Uh, continue to encourage her. Yes. Because oftentimes in Nigeria, a lot of talented people show up, mm -hmm. either in uh, oratory or in sports or yes. in academics. And then all, along the line, you know, mm -hmm. they get, you know, uh, their progress gets truncated by mm -hmm. the problems in the environment. Right. Having been spotted, mm -hmm. you know, in other parts of the world, they will yeah. nurture her, they will groom her you know, so that she can realize her potential to the fullest. Yeah, she's yeah. back in Nigeria now, and hopefully she continues with her activism. Yeah. All right, well, still here in Nigeria, the wife of the president and first lady of Nigeria, Aisha Buhari, returned to Nigeria yesterday from her stay in the UK and has attributed her long stay outside the country to doctor's instruction. Mrs. Buhari disclosed this in an interview that she granted to journalists shortly after she arrived at the international airport in Abuja. Confirming that she is in better health now, she, however, disclosed that she still needs more rest. Social media last week was agog with speculations of marital trouble in Asso Rock. Mm -hmm. I mean, um, her interview uh, yesterday with journalists, she also mentioned she, the fact of fake news. I yeah. mean, yeah, last week we all saw a wedding that took place on social media. We don't know how accurate that is. And she also has um, given a statement saying that it is not her duty to either confirm or debunk the news and that people should stop carrying fake news. So, I mean, <laughs> it's... it's yeah, yeah, I mean, before you yeah. came on set, right. we made the point about fake news. Correct. That, look, it runs counter to all the principles of journalism. Truth, accuracy, fairness, objectivity. <clears throat> and in any case, if you promote falsehood, Correct. you can cause a very serious problem. Yeah. And the way people focused on this story that never was, you know, um, uh, they could have caused a heartache, they could have caused... Uh, if she was not strong, mm -hmm. you know, if she believed it, right. I mean, you don't know what could have happened, okay? Leila was saying offset that, uh, why did she have to rush back immediately? <laughs> <laughs> and I Which said, well, she, 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 has, she has to rush back immediately <laughs> to make sure this that the story... This was a joking matter. She had to make sure she was back. <laughs> nah, to make sure that the story is not true. Yeah. You know? uh -huh. The kind of damage that people can cause by just you know, promoting falsehood. It's worrisome. And yeah, that's why right. sometimes you don't blame people mm -hmm. who are asking for some form of regulation. Right. To make sure that you don't just 
I mean, cause so much confusion in yeah. people's lives, mm -hmm. you know, uh, just because you have access to some miserable uh, uh, phone. And she also talked about when her husband mm. was ill, she got calls from different world leaders, first ladies, because there were pictures circulating that her husband had died. I mean, it's such an embarrassing thing for mm -hmm. people to go after, I mean, a, a woman of such caliber for no reason. I mm. mean, I don't know if it's true. Who knows if it's true? But, I mean, if it is untrue, as, you know, we, we may know, it's clearly unfair. And then there's also the unfair. other question yeah. about the private lives of public persons. Right. I know that in law, they say volenti non fit mm -hmm. julia. That is, if you don't like heat, don't go near the uh, kitchen, right. Yeah. right? And that means, you know, if you are a public person, you have given up a part of your privacy. But how much of it can yeah. the uh, public intrude upon? There still has to these be some are, level of privacy you know, These are some of the exists. questions Absolutely. about fake news, fake speech, and also about the private lives of uh, public persons. Yeah. But uh, we are happy for her that there is no, as I said earlier, that, she's back that and the she's other healthy. room is safe. Yeah, that she's <laughs> <And there's no> <laughs> But yeah, that she's healthy, seeing that as she's said that she went for medical attention. Yeah, uh, you are not concerned about the safety of the... Well, <laughs> I mean, I don't know how unsafe So you're saying that she came back to see what's going on in the other room. <laughs> Hopefully she did not find anything else. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Well, let's take a story under entertainment still in Nigeria. Embattled lawmaker representing Kogi West Senatorial District, Senator Dino Malaye, has made his Nollywood debut in a television series entitled... Equity Unbound. The Kogibon politician and senator was unveiled as the lead character of the series hours after losing his seat at the appeal court. Milaya is expected to feature alongside Dan Mwanyangu, the national chairman of the Zenith Labour Party, and other notable Nollywood actors. Equity Unbound TV series is a soap opera that historically x-rayed the quality of justice system in Nigeria and its attendant effect on the masses, the elites, and the government. Senator Dino Malaye has said that he's elated to be part of the project as it will expose the unjust act in the society. What, what else does he want to add to his portfolio at this point? I he's honestly... a comedian, he's an MC, he's also a fashion model, I think. Mm -hmm. as well. Well, I mean, he's been an actor for time, <laughs> running off into the bush and getting kidnapped or whatever it was that he claimed. Well, I don't think it's, there's anything wrong in anybody no, you can exploring their Correct. creativity. Yeah. After all, the president of Ukraine, Zelensky, right. uh, was a comedian. Was a comedian. And he became president. Mm -hmm. So I think Dino Melaye will just succeed in showing that he's, he's talent. talented and right. he's creative. Right. You know, and I don't think anybody will be surprised that he has this side to him. Yes. You know, yes. Absolutely. Well, congratulations to him. We, we, I can't wait to see the series. I think he's really good uh, of a, as an actor. Yeah. Well, let's take our final story under sports real quick. Trio female athletes Simone Biles, Coco Goff, and Bridget Kosigi all had quite a weekend making history for women in sport. Olympic champion Simone Biles flipped her way to becoming the most decorated gymnast ever, while 15-year-old tennis star Coco Goff served her way to becoming the youngest tennis titleist in 15 years. And Kenya's Bridget Kosgi ran really fast for 26.2 miles to smash a world record. She not only won the Chicago Marathon for the second year in a row, she also broke the women's record, the women's marathon record. This morning, we'll celebrate these remarkable young women in their respective sports. Congratulations to these ladies. Yeah, congratulations. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> Perfectly in order. Very, congratulations are in order yeah, for all of them. Thank you very much, Oji. We'll see you, you again tomorrow morning. See you tomorrow. Definitely. Thank you.